relatively speaking, living a healthy, productive life is about knowing your limits. How much is too much money to spend? How much is too much food to eat? You get the picture. Yeah, so imagine living a life without limits. Wait a minute. We're not going to ask you to go out and max out your credit card, eat everything in sight, no. But we do want to tell you about a group that encourages people with disabilities to take advantage of the same opportunities that man, take the same risks, enjoy the same rewards as everybody else in the community. The group is called We Stand for Something, and we are very honored to have founder Emmanuel Jenkins with us today. Thank you, Thank you. for joining us in Historic Thanks. Studio D. Um, we're going to talk about your organization in just a few moments, but first I want to talk about you, obviously confined to a wheelchair, and I, I imagine you don't like the word confined. <laughs> Tell us your story. Uh, I was born with cerebral palsy. My mom found out uh, when I was about one and a half. Um, and cerebral palsy is classified as a muscle weakness and it has a lot to do with the cerebral part of your brain. Uh -huh. But uh, as you can tell, I don't let that hold me back from from doing anything. Yeah, um, well, we're looking at pictures of you when you were a child and you, you're a very happy child. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you didn't look like you had many limits there. And then you went on to go to school and... Graduated uh, C14 in high school in 04. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that was like one of the most biggest accomplishments I ever done in my life. I was always told, you know, you would never get a diploma, you would never get married, you would never work a full-time job. But as you can tell, I threw that in the water and said, I'm going to do what I want to <laughs> yeah. do. So. And you did all of that. <laughs> yes. so you got married and you even have a child. Yes. How old is he? He's 10. Oh. Yeah. That's now, amazing. I, I have had the privilege of knowing this man for several years now. And, and you have been a motivational speaker since you were a kid. And you actually turned it into a career. Yes. Tell yeah. me about that. I um, uh, Talking was something I always loved to do. Um, but I, like, I really didn't turn it into a career until I got older. And I said, you know, I really love talking. Why not make money doing it? <laughs> um, people, people always ask me, you know, do you mind telling me your story? And that I can reply with, no, I get paid to do it. You know, <laughs> um, it feel, It's a lot easier when you get paid to do something. So. Right, right, right. So, um, but it's always, it's one of those careers where you see the impact right away. You don't have to wait until you're check comes in the mail because directly yeah. after you get done speaking you have a group of people come up to you and say oh my god that was so amazing but what do you tell them um i uh, my ultimate goal for every speech is to let people know that you can live regardless of your limitations regardless of where you come from i have a saying that life is, life is like a car it'll take you anywhere you want to go but you got to get in the driver's seat. So I, I give people the tools to get in the driver's seat and be whatever they want to be in life. Wow. Mm. Wow, that is amazing. Wow. Okay, so you're here to talk uh, about We Stand for Something. Yes. Tell us about how this all got started. Uh, we, we Stand for Something got started back in 2014. I, I took part in a Partners in Policy Making program for Delaware, and it's a program for individuals to learn how to advocate for themselves mm -hmm. or other people. And in the program, we had to come up with a final project. And when I found this out, I said, you know, I really want to do something that's gonna last. I don't wanna do just a project and present it and then it's over. Right. I want something that's gonna last. So I came up with the idea that originally started out as a group where we would meet uh, once a month. And it was a support group for people with disabilities. And I wanted to make it larger. And that's how we got to be a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And now we're rolling. And <laughs> I don't want to look back no time <laughs> soon. So. And, and, and the group does so much. I mean, you have uh, workshops and job opportunities. And uh, tell us about that. Uh, we, we, yes, we do a lot, um, but um, we mainly, we stand for something. There's a place for people with and without disabilities to come to us to realize, again, there is no limit. Uh, you know, I, I use the philosophy that our biggest roadblocks are the ones that we stand. So when you come to us, we try to give you what you're looking for 
And, you know, we do what most organizations call a, a intake process. Yeah. But within that intake process, we have a conversation. And through conversation, we figure out what you want to do and how we can help you do it. Um, you mentioned employee services. Mm-hmm. My ultimate goal uh, once we get a bill in them, that 90% of my employees will be disabled. So that way, when you call our office and we say, you know, we understand, we're not telling you because it's a formality and it sounds good. We, we truly do understand because the other person on the other end of the phone is going to be disabled. So we're going to understand exactly what you're going through. You get it. We get it. You get it. Now, we were looking at some pictures. Uh, as he was talking, we saw some pictures of some food. And I feel like we need to explain. This is actually... Talk to us about Friday Feast. Friday Feast. A Friday Feast um, started uh, started two years ago. We're coming up on our third annual Thanksgiving uh, dinner. And the Friday Feast is actually a play on Thanksgiving dinner. Right. But we wanted to... Um, we wanted to build a place for people with disabilities and their families to come in to enjoy a Thanksgiving dinner. Um, oftentimes, if you live in a group home, a nursing home, uh, other community settings, you don't often get the full Thanksgiving dinner. You might get meals on wheels and a piece of turkey and some mashed potatoes. Which isn't bad, which but... Are, which isn't bad, but I wanted to give people the true experience of a Thanksgiving dinner. So, pictures that you saw, we had the whole bag. We have the turkey, <laughs> the ham, um, and everything. It's just a fantastic time. So, we're co- like I said, we're coming up on our third annual Thanksgiving Day. And this year, this year is going to be bigger than it ever has been before. So, I'm wow. really looking forward to this year. Yeah. That's true. So, how can we get involved? Um, we, ha- we, have a, we have a website that you can go to. Okay. It's um, brand new. And we're going to have a link to that website. And, uh, yes. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, um, people ask me that all the time. How can we get involved? You know, not necessarily coming to us to, to be involved, but my dream started with just an idea. Yeah. So, you know, getting involved simply means what can I do for my community right here, right now? Well, thank you so Amazing. much. i got to tell you, you, you just amaze me with Thank how you. you give back to your community. Thank, Thank you. you for doing it. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, we do have more information on stand for, we stand for something on our website, delmarvalife.com.